Hello, I am Dr. Anupama Chaudhary Devkan, your physiology faculty, and this is the daily quiz series targeting NEET PG 2025. And today's questions are on the cardiovascular and respiratory systems. Let's go on to the first question. Propagation of the cardiac action potential will be fastest through which of the following? The fastest conducting fibers of the heart are the Purkinje fibers. Purkinje fibers will conduct the action potential at a speed of 4 meters per second. The AV node is the slowest conducting and this conducts the cardiac impulse at a speed of 0 0.05 meters per second. The slow conduction through the AV node is responsible for the nodal delay. The duration of the nodal delay, 92 milliseconds or 0 0.092 seconds. Which of the following conditions at the SE node will cause the heart rate to decrease? Now, increase norepinephrine, that means increase sympathetic discharge. This will cause the heart rate to increase. We know that sympathetic is positively chronotropic, so it will cause an increase in heart rate. Now, before I go on to the other options, let's have a look at the pacemaker potential. The pacemaker potential looks like this. The resting membrane potential is minus 50 to minus 60 millivolts, approximately minus 55 millivolts. There are three phases, phase 0, phase 3 and phase 4. Phase 0 is depolarization because of a calcium influx and this is through calcium L channels. Phase 3 is repolarization. This is because of a potassium efflux. And phase 4, which is known as the prepotential phase. In the prepotential phase, the potential goes from resting potential of minus 55 millivolts to the firing level of approximately minus 45. How does it go from more negative to less negative? By gaining positive charge. And there are three mechanisms by which it gains positive charge. Remember, phase four is also known as the prepotential phase. And the three mechanisms by which it gains positive charge is number one, there is a decrease in potassium efflux. The potassium efflux, which occurs in phase three, decreases in phase four, so gain of positive charge. Number two, there is opening of the funny channel in this phase. What is the funny channel? It permits movement of both sodium and potassium, but the movement of sodium predominates. That means sodium comes from outside to inside. Cell is gaining positive charge. And the third is a calcium influx through what are known as the calcium T channels. Right? So by increasing calcium permeability or by increasing sodium permeability, more the cell will gain more positive charge. So what will happen to the slope of the depolarization? Slope of the depolarization will increase. So faster depolarization means that what will happen to the heart rate? It will increase. Right? So sympathetic stimulation, nor epinephrine, increased sodium permeability, calcium permeability, all three will increase the heart rate. But if I increase potassium permeability, that means I cause more potassium to leave the cell. Increasing permeability means that uh, that particular ion will go from higher to lower concentration. By increasing sodium and calcium permeability, sodium and calcium will come from outside to inside the cell and the cell will gain positive charge. But by increasing potassium permeability, potassium will go from inside to out, so cell will lose positive charge. Remember, in phase four, I want a net gain of positive charge. If the cell starts losing positive charge, the slope of phase four will reduce and the heart rate will decrease. So answer to this is D. Which of the following would be true if the blood lacked RPCs and just had plasma and the lungs were functioning normally? See, when you look at the oxygen content of the blood, oxygen content of the blood is an ml per 100 ml. This is oxygen in combination with hemoglobin. 
plus it also includes the dissolved oxygen in plasma. And the dissolved oxygen in plasma is measured in terms of PO2 in millimeters of mercury. So if there are no RBCs, this oxygen in combination with hemoglobin will not be present. But the dissolved oxygen in plasma, which is nothing but the PO2, will be normal. So arterial PO2 will be normal. But what will happen to the oxygen content? Oxygen content will be reduced because oxygen in combination with hemoglobin is not present. Next question. A 50-year-old man has a pulmonary embolism that completely blocks the flow to his right lung. So if I'm blocking the flow to the right lung, now ventilation is normal. But the perfusion to the right lung is blocked. There is no blood flow. If there is no blood flow, there will be no exchange. If there is no exchange, there will be a very high PO2 in the alveolus. And what about the CO2? Remember, the source of CO2 in the alveolus is from the blood. If there is no blood flow, the CO2 will be very, very low. Right? So my answer to this question is a high PO2 and a low PCO2. Pulmonary embolism means perfusion is zero. The VQ ratio is equal to infinity. That means there is no exchange. That means the lung is now like dead space. It's called alveolar dead space. Right? So this is the VQ ratio equal to infinity. And the composition of the alveolar air will be like dead space air. High PO2, very low PCO2. Let's look at the next question. An increase in which of the following will decrease the blood flow? If I increase the pressure gradient, that means P1 minus P2, if I increase this gradient, what will happen to flow? Flow is directly proportional to the pressure gradient. More the pressure gradient, more the flow. So this is not my answer. Flow is directly proportional to the fourth power of radius. So if I increase the radius, the flow will increase. But if I increase the blood viscosity, flow, what is the relationship between viscosity? Flow is equal to pi by 8 into delta P r to the power 4, which we've just discussed, divided by neta L. What is neta? Viscosity. More the blood viscosity, less will be the flow. So answer to this is viscosity. Plasma colloid osmotic pressure does not have a direct relationship with flow. So answer to this is D. 